Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to find the Laplace transform of the function f of t uh, is equal to uh, sine of a t. Okay, and uh, from the definition, we know that L of um, sine of a t, uh, which we can also write as um, f of uh, capital F of s, is equal to the limit from uh, zero to infinity of e to the negative s t times sine of a t uh, d t. And now, um, because we're dealing with an improper integral, uh, we uh, write limit as b goes to infinity of, and it's the integral from zero to b now, and um, e to the negative s t times sine of um, a t, um, and then uh, d t, right? Okay. Cool. Let's call uh, this integral with the limits of integration and with the limit as uh, b goes to infinity, let's call it integral capital B. But first, because it mainly deals with this uh, integral of e to the negative st sine of at, I'm going to say that capital A is equal to um, the integral of e to the negative st sine of at uh, dt. And once I work out capital um, a, I know that it will give me um, a way to uh, basically find uh, capital B, which is what we're after, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, now, this integral here is just an exercise in integration by parts. Um, so uh, we'll say that dV is equal to um, sine of at times dt, and so V will have to equal negative cosine of at uh, divided by A. And then we'll say that uh, u is equal to e to the negative s t. So that du is equal to negative s e to the negative s t times d t. Right? OK, cool. Um, so then, um, so then uh, we can write that capital A is equal to um, u v, so negative e to the negative s t times cosine of a t all divided by a uv minus the integral of v du. Now v and du come with a negative and so that takes care of itself so we'll keep this minus sign from the integration by parts formula and uh, also notice the v uh, will mean that we have an, a constant a in the denominator of what I'm about to write and du will mean that we have a constant of, a constant of s and the numerator of what I'm about to write so we can factor out an s over a. Um, from what I'm about to write is what I'm telling you. Remember, we took care of this minus sign and that minus sign. So I can write s over a here and then write integral of, um, and then it will be e to the negative st times cosine at uh, dt. And this integral here is now going to require integration by parts. And we're going to make the same pick of u. Uh, so you just need to say now that dv is equal to um, cosine a t d t uh, so that uh, v is equal to um, sine of a t divided by a this time for this integral. So now we'll say that um, our integral a is equal to and um, for uh, writing more succinctly I'm going to take care of this by writing it in the denominator with a positive exponent. So I can write negative cosine of a t um, divided by a times e to the positive st, and then I'll have minus s over a, and then I'll uh, open a hard bracket so that I could write the integral of this, which is going to require the integration by parts formula. So uv, and this time uv is um, e to the negative st times sine of a t um, all divided by a, right? So that's uv and then minus the integral of v du. Um, minus v is positive this time, but du is still negative. So we say plus, and then again, we'll have an s over a that we can factor out. So s over a, and then integral of what? Integral of e to the negative st times sine of a t times dt. Wait, deja vu? Because look here, this here is a, right? And this integral here is also a. So really what I have here um, is just capital A, right? So I could just erase this integral here 
and write um, s over a well little a right times capital a cool 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 and uh, so then next uh, what I'm gonna do is distribute this minus s over a to uh, this guy and this guy and when I do what what's gonna happen is I could get rid of the hard brackets here and I'll just have uh, negative s don't worry I'm gonna erase this and then I'll have a squared here right and I guess to bridge the gap that I just created here I'll just write like a, pl a giant plus sign so plus all right and uh, I still have to distribute that minus s over a here so that's just gonna say um, s squared over a squared and then turn this plus sign into a minus sign right and I'm good and of course I have to now get rid of this unnecessary uh, bracket yeah okay cool 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 all right all right now what now you see that um, what I have right here uh, has no T in it and I have a capital A here and I have a capital A here so I want to combine like terms so I'm gonna add um, s squared over a squared times capital A to both sides of this equation and when I do what I'm gonna get on the left side will um, will be written or it can be written as a times 1 to replace this uh, a uh, plus and then plus s squared over little a squared uh, because remember I've added this to both sides right and so the left side turns into this and of course since I've added this to both sides of this equation this is gone right and so the right side is only going to say is only going to say uh, negative cosine of well let me create some space intentionally so um, the right side is going to say negative cosine of um, a t uh, divided by uh, a times e to the s t and then um, I'll have minus right s over a squared and then uh, I can uh, put this downstairs right and write sine of um, a t divided by um, e to the um, and then positive s t now I can turn this a into this capital a here into a capital B uh, so long as I do uh, something on the right side and it should be clear what that something is and that something is so long as I write limit as B goes to infinity right here and also uh, evaluate uh, at zero and at B right there yeah okay cool 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 so um, that means getting common denominators in here we can write capital B right capital B by the way it was here just a reminder capital B and then a squared plus s squared over a squared uh, is going to equal the limit as B goes to infinity and then I'm gonna plug in B and then I'm gonna plug in uh, zero into this quantity here right and of course take the difference between the value of B and the value at zero you know calculus so so minus cosine of minus cosine of a b divided by a times e to the s b and then minus s over a squared times sine of a b over um, e to the s b right that's plugging in um, b right ah, I didn't know that I was like twisting my page or whatever I was just like into this thingy uh, into what I'm doing so I wasn't paying attention to like what you're looking at but like yeah okay anyway anyway um, <clears throat> anyway um, now we plug in zero but we also subtract so we subtract uh, we subtract plugging in zero here and there when we plug in zero in here we get negative cosine of zero which is negative one over a times e to the zero which is just a in the denominator so we get negative one over a but we have this negative sign so we could just write plus and one over a and the one over a doesn't need a parenthesis but doesn't hurt either yeah okay cool cool and then we plug zero and when we plug zero well yeah I only plugged in zero here so I need to plug in zero there but then I'm gonna get sine of zero in this part so everything here is gonna just turn into zero because I'll have sine of zero so I have um, minus minus zero so plus zero okay cool so I've got the B which is the Laplace transform of sine of AT is going to turn out to be the following um, which is well actually first let's keep the a squared plus s squared 
over a squared multiplying the b um, for the time being and see what happens when we send b to infinity in this part because uh, hopefully that simplifies right when we send b to infinity in this part first notice that uh, notice that um, negative 1 is less or equal to uh, cosine of um, at uh, is less or equal to 1 right that's saying that cosine is bounded and similarly negative 1 is less or equal to sine of uh, at uh, is less or equal to uh, 1 so sine of at or sine is bounded by negative 1 and 1 and so is cosine so uh, this is as we send b to infinity this is just going to be a bounded function whose maximum value is 1 1 or negative 1 right but when we send b to infinity this denominator is going to go to infinity so we'll have like a finite thing here uh, divided by a very very big thing a continually growing big thing so this is going to go to zero uh, not thing but number but you get it you get it okay and similarly since sine is also bounded in the numerator um, then this is going to go to um, this is going to go to zero because e to the sb is going to grow without bound as b goes to infinity right so we'll have like a, a continually growing denominator which is going to dominate the numerator so this is going to go to zero right ah that arrow all right anyway anyway um so then the, the right side is just going to be one over a once we send b to infinity once we evaluate the limit and so it's pretty clear what i'm going to do next which is multiply both sides of this equation i have by the um, multiplicative inverse of this or the reciprocal of this right and so then b uh which is what we've been after uh, which is l of l of sine of at right that's what b is right um, is going to equal is going to equal 1 over a times um, 1 over a times um, a squared um, over uh, a squared plus s squared and this a and that a squared can simplify to an a so l of sine of at to conclude um, will have to equal will have to equal um, a over um, a squared plus s squared. Yeah? All right, cool. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it was helpful. Uh, keep watching. Take care.